Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the five main skills that you require in order to do a PhD. So currently, I'm a fourth year PhD student at University College London, and I'm just about to finish. However, in my four or so years, I've learned quite a lot about PhD, and I feel like I can give you the five main skills that you really do need to work on or require in order to do a PhD. This is for students who maybe have finished their masters and are looking into doing a PhD, but want to know what kind of skills they will actually need before even trying to get into a PhD. So the first and probably the most important skill is time management. Now this skill really, really needs to be on point. If you start your PhD without this skill, it's going to be one of the first skills you actually pick up. This is because during your PhD, there are so many concurrent things going on. You have so many projects to do, you have papers to write, papers to submit, journal corrections to give back, something pops up, a conference pops up, an email pops up that you need to have your attention to, and you kind of need to prioritize your tasks. Therefore, time management is an essential skill, especially Especially when meeting tight deadlines that could literally be something that your supervisor wants the next day or in a few hours. You need to juggle your priorities and it's not like undergraduate or masters where they have deadlines but the deadlines don't overlap because there is some sort of coordination between your taught modules that they don't overlap. However in PhD you might be given something to do and it has a two week deadline and something comes up before that with even more urgency that has a one day deadline so you obviously know that a two week deadline doesn't mean a two week deadline you have to get things done before because you have to have some slack or leeway in time so that you can do other tasks that come creep up literally out of nowhere. The second important skill that you need as a PhD student is communication skills and this is for many different reasons. First of all you need to be able to communicate to your peers, you need to be able to communicate for example in a laboratory where there are multiple people working on limited equipment. There needs to be some sort of communication between the people working, what times will they be working, what, how long will the experiment run. If you're really bad at communicating then there will be so many problems that will not only slow down your work but the work and progress of others. So for example like I said in a lab you can have an equipment and if someone's using it for two weeks constantly and they haven't communicated this to other people, then of course people will be annoyed because they won't be able to use that machine for two weeks. It puts back someone by two weeks. And two weeks seems like a short thing, but if you're held up two weeks here and there and there, those four years, that's literally gold dust. Two weeks is such a big time. And not just that, you need to be able to communicate with your supervisor. And now supervisor, if you've watched any other PhD videos or know anyone of a PhD, or even if you're doing a PhD yourself, the supervisor is such a core part of your PhD. It is sometimes the make or break of your PhD and communication with your supervisor is so important because mishaps in communication or miscommunication with your supervisor will lead to many many issues. One future video that I'm going to do so make sure you subscribe is PhD and mental health and the supervisor plays a core role in that. So communication skills is something that you really really need to have or develop during a PhD or before you even start that would be ideal. If you're poor at communication not only are you letting your team down but you're letting yourself down and you're letting your PhD down to. The third skill that is almost a requirement for most types of PhD especially in STEM is analytical skills. So for the most part most PhDs or most PhDs in STEM require analysis of your results. This acts as the core of all your scientific discoveries. Without being analytical, without being quantitative, saying what your results mean or not knowing how to observe your results. There is no scientific backbone to your results and essentially writing will be impossible if it's not an analytical or anecdotal or non-scientific then your work will probably not get published in any respectable journal and the basis of your PhD which is a lot to do with writing is just it just falls apart. Analytical skills is something you probably would have gained during your first degree or your master's. It's the ability to actually analyse things, find patterns and trends in results and data so that it can point you towards spending your time and effort on a specific thing to see if this changes that. It's all that sort of scientific stuff and analytical skills are very important not only in PhD life but also when you get out and inside of work. And that is going to be another video so make sure you tune in that because I'm going to be talking about the transferable skills you learn from university not just from doing a PhD. Analytical skills are very important and definitely definitely brush up on those before starting a PhD. The fourth skill that is so important in having for doing a PhD is problem solving. Problems are going to arise left right centre, up down, in three dimensions and even four dimensions in your PhD. 
Examples are your results are negative. They don't show what you want to show. Your machine stopped working. The people you're collaborating with have stopped collaborating or they're taking too long on one thing. The machine that you've just moved from one place to another stops working. The data you have is all the wrong way around. So you must be able to actually solve these problems. You need to identify and diagnose what the problems are and what you can do, what the steps that you can take in order to solve them. If it's dealing with people, a lot of the times it is dealing with people and you have to be able to problem solve people's dilemmas, especially if you have undergrad students like I did, master's students, they'll have problems all the time, such as experiments that you set for them, something's not working, maybe something very simple, maybe they haven't even switched the machine on properly, or maybe it's something very difficult as in the chemical they used might have been expired or the solvent they used, they mixed it in the wrong way. So you have to be able to dissect everything down to the smallest bits and diagnose and find what the problem is. And this is an essential skill in having to do for a PhD and also real life because problems come all the time. And in understanding the basic principles of the building blocks of the thing, for example, diagnosing if your computer or your laptop doesn't work is important in knowing what the key parts of the computer and the laptop are and what part has stopped working and how we can actually solve that. Maybe we can replace the motherboard, maybe re replace the hard drive or something like that. That will actually lead you to solve the problem. Solving problems saves time. Even though you have 45 years for a PhD, time is of the essence. The timeline keeps going on without you. So you, if you don't solve the problems, the PhD will leave you stranded, unfortunately. Then the last skill that you should have that is essential for part of a PhD is networking skills. Now, this is the ability to be able to not only communicate with others, but sell yourself as an individual, as as an ambassador of your university or your society and offer to other people your skills and your research so that they can benefit from it and that you can benefit from their circle and build upon your network. For example, collaborations is a huge example for your PhDs. You literally cannot do a great PhD on your own. You won't have the time or the expertise to learn everything in such a small limited amount of time, which is four to five years. So you need to outsource sometimes. You need to find people that may be able to help you in a specific field. For me, I'm in the mechanical engineering department, but my PhD is on bio materials. My knowledge of chemistry is not great even though I did biochemistry. However, if I wanted to do something like a characterization technique that required more chemical knowledge or reagents from chemistry, I can do it myself, but it would take me probably two years to learn all these things just for one small part of the paper. That's not very efficient. So I would make collaborations with maybe the chemical department and speak to them, offer my expertise and knowledge on how I can help them and they can help me in their part. And it's only gonna take them two days in something that would have taken me two years. So collaboration is very important. Networking is so important. Not only is networking important in a scientific capacity, but after your PhD, you really have to decide where you wanna go. You wanna stay in academia, you wanna go into industry. You have to have these network, you have to have these connections with the industry and other people so that you can seamlessly transition from being a PhD student to your future career. Knowing people is really important. Famous phrase is it's not about what you know it's about who you know it does stand true a lot of the times. At the end of the day like I always say we are a human society and everything good bad and every measure is based upon other people essentially. So guys those are my five main skills that you require in order to do a PhD. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more videos like this. In my upcoming videos, I'm gonna be talking about the transferable skills that you learn from university, PhD and mental health, and I'm gonna focus a lot more on my content on PhD and university in the coming videos. If you like this video, please press like, comment down below and tell me what other skills you think are important for doing a PhD. And if anyone else is watching that's doing a PhD, please comment down below and let's start a discussion and, and or a community in the comments down below. And as always, thank you for watching.